and after school snacks also rose and that was up 6% to more than 43,000. incident is being investigated by NYPD and, and PASH, but I, I just want to take a minute just to remind everyone, you know, the work that we do, that the men and women of DOT do on our roads, our sidewalks, our bridges, our ferries, really life or death work. And I want to thank them for all they do. Remember, we all need to be safe and, and, and just take a moment of silence for Eduardo. Thanks, everybody. All right, well, I will, I will now turn to today's topic. Obviously, here today um, to, to celebrate something. We are announcing here for the de Blasio administration now, basically at the five-and-a-half-year mark, that this marks the installation of our 100th mile of on-street protected bike lanes. And that adds to what was previously the total of for, for the whole city prior to this administration, 26 miles of on-street protected bike lanes. It adds to our total now of 487 protected bike lanes, which includes greenways and all the other bike lanes around the city, and then a total of protected and non-protected of over 1,200 bike lanes. So a big milestone today, and we're particularly proud to be here in East New York to announce it. Um, we have a terrific group of people with us here. We have Hercules, we have Hercules Reed from Borough President Adams' office, Courtney Williams from the Brown Bike Girl Bicycle Advocacy Group, Angelina Azzolino from Get Women Cycling, Dulcie Cannon from Transportation Alternatives, a Brooklyn organizer, Sharon, is Sharon is here? Sharon is not here. Who did I, did I miss? Teresa. Oh, Teresa. Okay. Teresa, site manager for Restoration Jobs Plus in East New York. We are also very pleased to be joined today by Deputy Director Richard Fink from New York State Parks Department, because after our press event here, we're going to take a ride into the beautiful new Shirley Chisholm Park. Um, I am particularly excited to see this amazing group of women here today. Yeah. Um, you know, cycling is, oh, yeah, let's give yourselves a hand. I mean, cycling is often considered something that, that skews, let's just be honest, very male, very white, so it is great to have an incredibly diverse group here, particularly with a lot of amazing women who are, you are going to hear from. So again, 100 miles of protected bike lanes, and you can see the map up there, and I'll concede there is lots more to do, but that is nonetheless a huge accomplishment. We, we Some of us just participated in a, a NACDO conference, the, the group that represents all the big cities. And it sounds to us like New York is doing about a fifth of all the protected lane miles in the whole country. So, you know, we're very proud of today's accomplishment. And we're very excited that for this community, it's going to be a really safe and attractive connection to Shirley Chisholm Park, a park that I'm happy to say the city and the state did a lot of work on together to make sure that it would really connect with the neighborhood. The new lanes are between Sutter and Seaview. We rode them this morning. They'll provide access to the... Uh, a train station at Euclid Avenue, entrance to the Jamaica Bay Greenway, and a lot of nearby east-west connections in Brooklyn Bike Network, and I'm gonna, we'll hear from some people who are from this neighborhood to talk a bit more about that. These, these bike lanes are also entirely within Community Board 5, which is, as we have been speaking about this year, we've had unfortunately so many cycling fatalities in Brooklyn, one of our bicycle priority areas. In other words, an area where we're seeing more and more cycling, and some of the people here today will talk about that, um, and too many injuries and fatalities. So this is the kind of bike lane we want to see more of. And some of you saw something else we're, we're starting to work on in Brooklyn. We're going to be doing more of is what we're calling the green wave. There was a mention of it in the New York Times today, which is retiming signals on some key bike corridors to give bikes the ability to sort of travel at a good speed, to not hit too many red lights. It makes cycling safer. It makes it a lot more comfortable and enjoyable for cyclists. Uh-oh, something's falling over there. Um, We've done it on Hoyt and Bond Street in Borham Hill. We're going to also be doing it next on Clinton Street in Carroll Gardens, Cobble Hill in Brooklyn Heights, Prince Street in Soho, and 43rd Avenue in Sunnyside. We're going to look for routes after that. But so far, the reviews have been great. Cyclists, because they get more greens, they're less likely to run reds. They're reporting that their trips are faster, and we're not seeing a big impact on auto speed. So we're excited to do more of that around the city. 
as I mentioned, you know, unfortunately this year we've had just this incredibly disproportionate number of cycling fatalities in Brooklyn, 16 out of the 25, and the other boroughs actually we're seeing in some cases pretty low numbers. Uh, one of the cycling fatalities we saw this summer tragically was Ernest Askew, known to many as Andre. He was 57 years old. He was actually killed, unfortunately, not that far from here, June 27th on Sutter and Chester, not too far from where we started our ride today. So we gather here in his honor. We gather here to celebrate this milestone of, in the de Blasio administration, our 100th mile of protected bike lanes. And it complements some of the other work we've been doing in East New York. This summer, we also lowered the speed limit on Linden Boulevard from 30 to 25 miles an hour. Since 2013, those of you who have spent time in this neighborhood, been on Linden Boulevard, you know it, it's, it's a pretty fast-moving and, and complicated roadway. Since 2013, Linden Boulevard had seen 14 fatalities, including nine pedestrians and a cyclist, and a lot of injuries. So we're happy that we've lowered the speed limit. Thanks to the legislature and the governor, we've in our new speed camera bill, we've installed a lot of speed cameras there, and we're hoping to see that street be safer. I want to take a minute to acknowledge the team that's here from DOT that's been doing this incredible work. The planners, the designers, the construction crews, everyone deserves thanks. We have, who do we have here today? We have Sean Quinn. I don't know if Ted Wright is another one. Oglean Alcida, who you're going to hear from today. She is the one who designed this bike lane. Patrick Kennedy, who's been leading a lot of our work in Brownsville and East New York. And of course, always our Bronx, I mean our Bronx, our Brooklyn Borough Commissioner Keith Bray and our Deputy Borough Commissioner Claudette Workman. So now I would like to turn to some of the folks we have standing with us today. We're going to start with representing the Brooklyn Borough President's Office, Hercules Reed, someone else who lives in this area and was telling me how excited he is to help us do this incredible life-saving work. Hercules, come on up. Can you just spell your name for us? Yeah, um, my name is Hercules Reed, that's H-E-R-C-U-L-E-S, last name Reed, R-E-I-D. And I'm here on behalf of Brooklyn Borough President, Eric L. Adams. Um, I first want to actually start off and say thank you to Polly Tronberger, who's been doing amazing work um, to keep our streets safe here in Brooklyn. Uh, as was uh, mentioned earlier, we've been going through a tragedy here in Brooklyn where we've been losing people to vehicles um, and unsafe streets. And as much as we applaud today, we say that there's still work to do. And that's what this is about. As our city develops, as Brooklyn develops, we must keep up with it. With the infrastructure that is coming to Brooklyn, we need to make sure that the streets are also being improved and developed. Um, something like today as myself, I do bike. Um, I bike to work, I bike for leisure. And coming here today, I went from an unprotected scenario to a protected bike lane on Fountain Avenue. And the relief that I felt in that moment speaks to the number of people who will be surprised as they come onto Fountain and see the green lane and are very excited to know my, my trip down this, down this lane will be safe. And we will continue to work through Borough Hall to make sure that we work with DOT and everyone in our city to continue to ensure that we lay down more lanes in our city and we protect more lives. And this is not just about bikes. This is about pedestrians. This is about cars and bicyclists. We want to make sure the streets of Brooklyn are safe. So no matter what option you want to travel, you do not have to worry and look over your shoulder. Thank you. Um, next, I, I think I want to call up uh, our partner here from New York State, Andrew Williams, who's the manager of this park. He's going to say a few words. Andrew's here. Richard. Oh, I'm sorry. Richard. I got you backwards. Thank you. Richard. Thank you. So tell me, is Richard Williams? Good morning. My name is Richard Fink. That's F-I-N-K. I'm the Deputy Regional Director for New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation here in the New York City region. Um, first and foremost, we, we absolutely want to thank the City of New York, the entire DOT team, for building this beautiful bike lane and allowing people to come to our park safely and accessibly. Um, the bike lane that we're standing on here, just a few feet away, goes into our newest state park, Shirley Chisholm State Park, uh, which opened in July. And since July, we've had over 1,000 visitors to our newest state park. Um, there are 10 miles of bike trails within the park, and just the concept and the thought of being able to connect more riders, connect more local residents to state resources and our beautiful parklands, 
uh, is such an incredible opportunity for us. So uh, we truly appreciate the collaboration between city and state, and we're thankful for the opportunity to bring more people to our beautiful state park. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Richard. That's your name. All right, we're going to hear now from some of the amazing advocates on the ground who have been such fantastic partners with us. And these kinds of projects, and this summer as we formulated our Green Wave, we turned to a lot of the people standing here to get their good ideas and advice about how we can make cycling safer uh, throughout New York City. So first we're going to call on Courtney Williams, Chief Strategist for Brown Bike Girl Bicycle. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Courtney Williams. That's C-O-U-R-T-N-E-Y Williams. Uh, I am the Brown Bike Girl, a consultant who specializes in bicycle equity advocacy. Um, I've been working in the East Brooklyn area uh, on bicycle culture activation since 2007. Uh, 17, excuse me, with different nonprofits and the Department of Health and different city agencies. And it's my moral obligation because of the job I do to get on the microphone and really emphasize what the meaning and impact of a protected bike lane and more pr protected bike lanes throughout the city really means for everyone. And it's not coincidental. You know, the, the majority of protected bicycle facilities exist in affluent areas. East New York, Brownsville are not affluent areas. And in those affluent areas, you see a, a more robust bike culture. You see people doing different types of cycling, be it commuting, shopping by bikes, feeling secure enough to even take loads of little kids who are like pre-K age on the bicycles and live their full lives. By contrast, here in East New York and Brownsville, where I help with the Bike East bike tour for the last three years, people come out once a year sometimes. The most enthusiastic people are only coming out once a year because they only feel as safe as with a protected bike lane when they're surrounded by a hundred other bikes, a hundred other bodies, and a police escort. When we get more bike infrastructure that is adequate, which is safe, it's going to promote a more robust bike culture. It's going to give the people who live in this area options that they need for what we really call liberation, the cho choice and the opportunity to transport themselves in a way that's affordable, that's practical, that contributes to their environment in a way where they will be more healthy. So when you think of bicycling, when you think of the types of facilities that go in, please always go for the best because all of New York's neighborhoods and neighbors deserve to have the options that the best, the most affluent, the most popular do have. And it is my hope that as DOT continues to roll out these uh, protected bike lanes via the Green Wave and its priority areas, that they will emphasize and prioritize creating the equity of going to the places who've been cons considered underinvested for the longest times and bringing them up to par so that we can not only save our lives, but we can have what the rest of the city has. Thank you. And we do want to come more and more into sort of, as you put it, getting out of the more affluent parts of the city. And it's super important as we do that, that we have amazing local partners on the ground. I uh, want to bring one of them up now, Teresa Kamara, site manager for Restoration Jobs Plus in East New York. Come on Thank you. Teresa, spell your name for us again. Teresa, T-E-R-E-S-A, last name Kamara, K-A-M-A-R-A. -A. Can you tell us the group you're with? I work for Beds, Bedford Stuyvesant Restoration, and I run the Jobs Plus program in East New York. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So I actually am a cyclist myself and an advocate for cyclists in East New York. And I actually met my employer, Best Eye Restoration, when they were sponsoring a community bike ride through Bedford Stuyvesant. Now that I'm in, in East New York, I try to integrate cycling into my work, and it is a hazard to our health to do so. Because cycling should not be a hazard to your health. It should actually be a boost to your health. From where I live and where I work, there are no protected bike lanes. East New York should not mean lesser New York. East is a geographic marker. It should not devalue the lives of the residents in East New York. It should not diminish our concerns about safety, and it shouldn't dismiss our statements when we say we need more. So for me to see the State Park, Shirley Chisholm Park in East New York, it makes my heart sink. For me to ride on a protected lane to the park makes my heart flutter. 
It is so big for us, but it is not enough. The engineering is fantastic. Shouldn't stop with engineering. The enforcement, it's coming, I know. But really, I would like to emphasize the education element. We have to educate riders. Wear your helmets. Obey the rules of the law of the road. We have to educate the riders, not de the drivers, not demonize them. They're our neighbors. They just have to understand. They have to share the road. Cyclists are trying to get somewhere too, and that's not to a hospital, and that's not to a morgue. So I want to thank the Department of Transportation. I want to thank the mayor's office. We love you. We love East New York. When we ride through, anybody who sees us riding through New East New York, it's a new narrative out here. Show us some love. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Another group, again, that is helping, I think, a new population of people hop on bikes, get women cycling, the executive director, Angela Azzolino. Angela. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Angela, say your name and spell it. Angela Azzolino. That's A Z as in zebra. Z again, O-L-I, N as in Nancy, O. I'm the executive director of Get Women Cycling, a bicycle commuting program specifically focused on commuting with a uh, specialty in the non-gender conforming female identifying audience. So thank you, Commissioner Trottenberg. Thank you, Mayor de Blasio. And thank you, all of you who put this beautiful lane in place. Um, I just want to talk about a little personal story before I, I um, comment on the protected bike lane. I work out of Sunset Park, Brooklyn. I also live in Sunset Park, Brooklyn. That's about eight miles from where we started. And this morning I wasn't really feeling up to riding, as sometimes we often do, a little lazy or for whatever reason don't want to jump on that bike. And when I looked at the options to get here, it was a four uh, trans transfers that I needed to take, four train transfers, and then once I got to the closest station, it was a 12-minute walk, and I thought, well, how would I do that? How do I factor in all those transfers, delays, ups and downs? And so and when I was looking at car traffic, to take an Uber or rent a car, car to go, it was about two minutes less than if I were to ride my bike. The option was clear. <laughs> As much as I really didn't feel like mounting up on the bike today, I did, and what a decision it was. It's a beautiful day, and I rode through neighborhoods that I didn't know about. I saw streets that I uh, uh, didn't see before. I saw beautiful uh, buildings and storefronts that I want to go back and visit. Sunset Park, Brooklyn is not that far, and the fact that I had to consider four transportation transfers plus a walk to get here is really disconcerting. Um, bicycle riding is a real option for areas like East New York, Canarsie, um, Brownsville, where transportation options are limited and where our neighbors aren't that far. To come to this park, and I spoke to Commissioner Trottenberg, it's been here since July, this is my first time here, um, thanks to this ride. Um, but I'll be sure to lead a group ride here and now that we have protected bike lanes, I'm sure it's going to be very popular. So um, thank you again. Uh, the protected bike lane uh, is not just for people riding bikes. I want you to know that. Uh, we go and we speak to motorists about driving. And uh, protected bike lanes also save lives for those in cars, for those who are passengers of cars, for those who are drivers of cars, and for those of us who choose to walk. Because of the very fact that the design has changed, traffic patterns slow down, and we know that slower speed saves lives. So on behalf of all New Yorkers, this is a very big win to have the 100th protected bike mile um, implemented, and we hope to see many more. So thank you. Thanks, Angela. And I, you, you, you made a good point. I just want to speak on it, and Olguin from our office will speak on it a bit more. You know, this roadway, Fountain Avenue, was an extraordinarily wide street, too wide for the volume of traffic. And, and one thing we heard loud and clear from the neighborhood, they were looking not just for the bike lane, but for that narrowing of the street, which would make the f street feel safer, slow cars down, make it easier to cross. So this, this project, you're right, it will have tremendous safety benefits. Now we're going to hear from the Brooklyn organizer, Transportation Alternatives, Dulcie Canton. Come on up, Dulcie. 
What are your names for? Good morning. Um, Dulce, D U L C I E, Canton, C A N T O N. I'm sorry, say, say this with him again. Dulce, D U L C I E. And spell your last name again. C A N T O N. Good morning, everyone. I'm the Brooklyn Organizer for Transportation Alternatives. Um, we'd like to thank the mayor and the DLT for installing this network of protected bike lanes on Fountain Avenue. The best way to protect New Yorkers who bike is to install truly protected bike lanes. We're happy that we have 100 miles citywide. We're looking forward to more. Um, we actually co led a ride We've this. in the past five and a half years. Oh, sorry. We have 126 <laughs> Sorry about that. On we just let a ride this past Saturday with Teresa to Shirley Chisholm State Park. It's a great park, and we're looking forward to coming to it more. Um, this type of infrastructure is very important out here in East New York, Central Brooklyn. It's it's a little bit slim, um, but my ride here from bed was on mostly protected lanes, and we look forward to more. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Elsa. All right, now we're going to call up the woman who has done incredible work both in designing this bike lane and the Green Wave project that we talked about in Borum Hill. She's our project manager, Olguin Alcide. Come on up, Olguin. Say a few words. I should say your name is Bella. Good us. morning. Um, it's Olguin, um, O-L-G-U-I-N-E, Alcide, A-L-C-I-D-E. So good morning. Um, my name is Olguin Alcide. I'm a project manager with uh, the bicycle unit. I had the opportunity to be able to work on the Green Wave, New York City's first bicycle Green Wave in Borum Hill, um, as well as this um, 100th mile here on Fountain Avenue. Um, something I want to say is that um, as a Canarsie resident, as someone who's um, just getting familiar with biking around New York City, um, I think these types of treatments really have the ability to transform how people move through their city streets and really um, change their choices um, and their options. Or in, um, when they get out onto the street and feel comfortable um, to use an alternative route um, just to get around on regular trips. Um, and I hope to continue to work on projects that makes um, biking safer, uh, more comfortable, um, and encourages people in East New York to make the choice to get on a bike. Um, I'd also like to give some special thanks to Bike NYC. Um, they're not here today, but I want to say thank you um, for providing adult training courses um, for cyclists um, and also being my first experience on a bike as an intern back in 2014. Um, and thank you again to um, the Signal Timing Unit for always working with us on all of our projects and making the Green Wave possible, um, and everyone in the bike team who really worked to make uh, Fountain Avenue so successful. Thank you. An RC native who just got on a bike in 2014, and now look at the incredible work she's doing. Oh, thank you so much. All right, happy. I think we, did I miss anybody? I think we're ready to take questions. Can you tell us more about the Green Wave? Can you tell us more about the Green Wave plan and how the timing and adjusting the timing will help bikers stay safe? Yes, um, and I'll, I'll maybe I'll you know, come up and say a couple words too. And she mentioned our signal timing group. This is a, a technique that, particularly in Europe and cities like Copenhagen, they've been doing now. We're starting to do it here in New York, which is we typically time our lights to let cars progress at, you know, could be 20, usually now 25 miles an hour. What we've done on Hoyt and Bond Streets in Borum Hill is time them essentially for cycling speeds, which can be somewhere between 12 and 15 miles an hour. And what that does, one, it makes it a much more enjoyable ride for cyclists because it's hard when you're on a bike and you keep hitting red lights. You stop and you start, and it does tempt you to sort of drift through those red lights. So what we're seeing, it's still preliminary, is cycling trips are faster. Cyclists are meeting more green lights, so we're seeing much less sort of jumping through reds. And when we look at the traffic effects on cars, they're, you know, particularly at those rush hours, it's, it's pretty negligible. Um, we want to do more than that. And I would note, particularly on quarters, you know, the thing about Hoyt and Bond, there's more in the peak times, there's more cyclists than vehicles. So particularly looking to those corridors where cyclists are the predominance of the traffic on the street, we think those streets, we should try and make the timing work for cyclists. So you can you can explain explain that to other places and how many, how widespread do you think this will be? Well, I mentioned three, we're going to, three more we're, we're teeing up in the coming months. Another one in Brooklyn, Clinton Street over that runs from Carroll Gardens, Cobble Hill to Brooklyn Heights, um, Prince Street in Soho to key bike route in Lower Manhattan, 
and then 43rd Avenue and Sunnyside, part of, as a lot of you know, a pair of protected bike lanes we put in last just, year. I have one more question. Though. Yeah. I just wonder what you think the effect will be on traffic and whether it will slow traffic well, down in, in rush hour. Yeah, let me, let me just finish. So I think we're going to do that next set, and we'll be looking at more after that. And obviously we'll be looking at all the, you know, does it, as we hope, make it a safer and more enjoyable ride for cyclists? Does it reduce cyclists jumping red lights? And what are the traffic impacts? I think, you know, one thing I've often said, Marsha, you've probably heard me say it 200 times at this point. I mean, typically in New York, if you're behind the wheel, you're not going to catch that many green lights. And, you know, particularly on those quarters where we see a lot of cyclists, we want to encourage cycling. We want to make sure that route is safe. And at least so far, we're not seeing a big traffic impact. Could you explain precisely what a protected bike lane is? I mean, a protected bike lane, and actually I may, I may, I'm going to call up our two biggest experts here. A protected bike lane is where you have what we would call vertical elements to separate the bikes from traffic. Can be, as you've seen here, these delineators, can be parked cars, can be other types of bears. I don't know if you guys want to say a yeah, little more um, on it. Particularly here on Fountain Avenue. Yeah, that's Come on. And we've been watching the Department of Transportation and other city officials announce their new green wave plan for improved bike safety and higher priority for cyclists at traffic lights. And this also comes as officials cut the ribbon on the new Fountain Avenue bike lane, which is the 100th mile of protected bike lanes that have been constructed under Mayor de Blasio. Now we'll have more on this development here on CBSN New York later today, but right now we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back.